me and uh, hi everyone really excited to be part of the devnet session to show you some of the latest and greatest stuff we've been doing today on the nexus series of switches and how you can make them programmable use all cool and exciting technologies and really leverage the nexus platform for programmability so um, we'll talk about specifically the new uh, programmability options that we have introduced uh, we talk about NX API and Ansible with NX API. So I'm Subhav, part of the product management team, and joined with me is Abhinav, who's part of the TME team to talk about today. So a quick agenda. We'll start by talking about the Nexus portfolio and all the options therein. We'll talk about NX API and how that is used today in today's platform. We we'll talk about use cases, how you can leverage NX API to like program your switches. We'll go on and talk about Ansible, um, a new uh, software configuration management tool that we can use today. Some use cases that are really powerful that you can use. And finally, some references um, that you can uh, use to get started. So let's get started. So today, um, the Nexus portfolio is some of the broadest uh, switching portfolio in the data center today uh, with LAN and SAN switching options. And it ranges right from the Nexus 2K to the 9K, right? And all different form factors from 10 gig, 40 gig to 100 gig. Really exciting portfolio. And what's really amazing about this portfolio, it has one operating system, the NX OS operating system, right? So across all of these platforms, a single operating system. Uh, this operating system is scalable, it's resilient, and uh, this gives you a lot of investment protection too, right? And so today, we've made this operating system both programmable and SDN ready as well. And so because of that, we can just leverage the whole gamut of programmability options that the DevOps model today, of the DevOps model of the future is looking at. So talking about NX API, right? So uh, for all of those, for those of you who don't know what this is, NX API is basically a REST-based API um, that helps to talk to the Nexus switch via the NX API web server. Now, this web server is part of the NX, uh, Nexus switch. And you can interact with the, server, with the switch via CLI commands. Now, what's so good is that you can remove complexity of CLI and do your scripting in JSON, JSON RPC, or XML. So that gives you a lot of flexibility, right? So just by doing the feature NX API command, you can get this enabled and begin programming. So I'll give you an example of how you can use NX API to get like a show version that you would do on CLI today. So on the left, you see that you begin by specifying the URL. That's the switch management interface on which you send a command to the Nexus switch. Right? So in this case, 172.25.91.147 is the management interface where you send the CLI request. Um, you can see that you give the credentials of uh, admin and um, Cisco TME to get started. Now let's look at the payload. So this is a JSON RPC request that you're sending to the switch. You mention the method, in this case it's CLI, and finally the actual command that you want to run, that is show version. So typically you would get on the box and do a show version, but in this case if you wrote the JSON RPC, you can see that you get really nice key value pairs in a very human readable format. And you don't just get a dump of stuff for which you don't know what to do, right? And then finally, if you want to say, uh, get to know what the kickstart image is, right? You just do response.json and you index into the data structure and you get the kickstart image response. Similarly, kickstart image version and system image version. So you can see just by one script, you can program your entire data center, the entire Nexus portfolio just with a simple JSON RPC script. So really powerful. Today we did not have this, and this isn't coming in the Nexus portfolio. Um, if you don't want to get into that complexity as well, we have something called as a developer sandbox that you can leverage. So after the featured NX API command, oh, where's the point? I'll just use it. This work? Not working. Huh? Yeah, it's on. Anyways, okay. So um, basically, after the feature NX API, you do NX API sandbox. 
And what that does is that kickstarts this graphical user interface that you can see here. So uh, you can enter your CLIs, for example, show version. And you see the response in JSON there in this um, uh, developer sandbox graphical user interface. So an example of that could be you do a show version here. Um, you, you get the request in NX API representation and find the response in JSON, which you can then again parse. So you can see that there's no use of expect, the tedious expect scripts that we wrote earlier. Yeah. Can't hear this question. So the question is, uh, if you support HTTPS, we do. And we support it on Nexus 3K, 9K today. On the Nexus 6K and 7K, it is in the next release coming uh, just this quarter. Seven yeah, so this is supported today on the 3K, 9K. So this is uh, a pre-FCS. Uh, pre yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, it is coming on the 6K. Yeah. So by end just, of June, you'll see this yeah. on the 6K, 5K too, and 7K. 7.2, 7.2, yeah. So now we saw how we can use JSON RPC to program your switch. But then you must be wondering, what can we really do with this? So cable plan consistency, right? Today you have thousands of switches in your data center. You want to ensure that the cabling is done consistently. And you want to verify that with CDP and an Excel uh, spreadsheet that you would have. Once again, you can leverage the NX API scripts, uh, run them against all the hosts in your particular data center, and compare them with the Excel sheet. So cable plan consistency is a very powerful use case. Apart from that, data collection and display, right? Be it your interface stats, your resources, your show commands, your various uh, stats. Since this is a JSON RPC format, you can very easily integrate it with the web and uh, display them on a web, web, web page. Then fabric path and VPC, uh, you can do some VLAN consistency checks. Once again, run this across the entire switches, as well as switch configuration, right? If you want to have MPLS or BGP and you want to configure it, you can configure your um, scripts using JSON RPC. So um, we saw what NX API can do. But what if you want to do these across multiple switches in parallel and automatically, right? You want to do them simultaneously across all switches. And that's when NX API isn't that powerful a tool. And then you will look at some configuration management tools that are there today. And that's where we come for Ansible, right? You would have heard of Ansible, a really powerful tool. It simplifies IT automation like no other. It's agentless. It helps you to deploy, configure, as well as orchestrate your systems today. Right, so we can see now how Ansible can be used with Nexus switches today. So some uh, terminology before we get started. So a host file is nothing but a series of hosts that you have that against which you want to do some configuration. So it could be a leaf, it could be a spine, a group of host switches. Uh, Jinja 2 is one of the templating languages in which you can basically convert your data structure to a file. Uh, YAML is YAML anti-markup language. Basically, remove complexity, make it in a very human-readable form, and that's how you would write your playbooks. And we look at scripts and examples of what this is. Tasks are basically uh, actions that you would need to perform. So for example, get interface statistics. That could be a task that you need to leverage. Um, modules are pre-written modules and libraries that you can use um, Ansible to call and execute your tasks. Uh, a play is basically a set of tasks that you would want to get accomplished, and a playbook has these plays. Uh, item potency is an important concept. Uh, most Cisco Nexus switches support that. And what that means is basically if, a, a desire, if an interface is in a desired state, or if an object is in a desired state, it will remain in that desired state. It will not change if it's already in that state. So we look at some examples of how we can use Ansible with NX API. So today, Ansible can run in two modes. Uh, if you have Python enabled on your switch, 
With SSH, you can use Ansible, or you can use it in local mode with NX API, right? So you can combine them and really execute some powerful use cases. So uh, NX API uses these open source libraries, uh, and one such library is uh, PyCSCO, uh, which is basically open source that can, you can use uh, to talk your Nexus switches using that. So it really eliminates the need for Python on your switches today. And uh, this is consistently supported across the Nexus product line. Um, in 3K, 9K, they already support NX API today, like you asked. And 5K to 7K is coming in uh, 7.2 software release. And so now we look at some demos that we've created that can help you learn how you can use Ansible today. So say you want to enable and disable some features on the Nexus 7000 switch. So uh, this is a description of how the script works. Um, I'll just go here. So we created a demo recording just so that uh, we'll save time and show you how this all works. So, uh, so this is an example of what a sample play playbook can look like, right? So a typical YAML playbook will start with three dashes, followed by one dash that tells you that what you can do today with this particular uh, YAML script. So in this case, we're just doing a feature testing. Uh, your host is typically in key value pairs. So in this case, I've specified a Nexus 7K. Uh, and then you come up to tasks. So like I explained earlier, tasks are basically a set of actions that you would like to perform. So in this case, what we're doing is uh, we're checking if uh, feature LACP is enabled on, one, on the switch, if OSPF is disabled, and if VPC is enabled, right? So we use the NXOS feature, which is a module written um, that you can leverage. So. As you can see on the left, here's the switch. We are doing a show feature. And we can see that the LSCP is already enabled on the device, right? Um, what is not enabled is OSPF. You can see they are disabled here. And then followed by the VPC, which is disabled. So of the three things, we have one enabled and two disabled, right? Our script wants to enable all three features uh, using Ansible. So let's see how we can do that. So as we execute the Ansible playbook, uh, we see that uh, featured LACP, the first task is run, and it says that, OK. That means that this particular task has run, and this feature is already enabled. And that's why I talked about idempotency, which is an important concept. If this is already enabled, it will remain in that same state. There will be no change. However. If you look at feature VPC as well as OSPF, both of them have the yellow, which means that changes have occurred by, by virtue of the script. So after running the particular playbook, you see that um, this is run thrice, and there have been two changes here. So change equal to two. So on the switch, both these features, which are not enabled previously, have now got enabled, right? Another way to verify this is you run the script again, and this time, changes are 0. Because all the three features that we wanted to enable are now enabled on the device. right? So this is just an example of the backend module um, that can enable you to do this. And courtesy goes to Jason Edelman for um, writing these scripts and simplifying work on the Nexus portfolio for all of us. And so now if you go back to the switch and you check, so we had to, so earlier VPC was disabled, and now it's enabled. Right? And similarly, if you check um, LSCP as well as OSPF, all of those will be enabled. So this was a use case of like how you can configure switches. Just by like probably three lines, you can configure your entire data center with these features. And now let's look at like data collection. So um, the output, like you saw, is in JSON format. And you can use Jinja templates to store data. 
as well as uh, pipe it with uh, to get JSON format so you can get like very nice JSON formats for further processing. And so now let's look at a rundown of this demo and how this particular um, YAML playbook works. This is an example of the host file, like I mentioned earlier. So you have one Nexus 7K as a spine and three more as the leaf, right? So you could have a variety of these switches all in this host file. And when you execute your script, it'll run against all of them all at once, right? So you can see, really see the power of uh, these Ansible playbooks. Uh, this is a simple script. It's just uh, getting facts from the, uh, your entire switches in the host file. Inventory underscore hostname is basically a keyword which indirects to the host files on the switch that you mentioned here. And finally, you store the data in a file. So as I play this demo forward, you can see that the, typically the way you run it is you press Ansible playbook. You specify host. And in this case, I've used the V or a verbose option to output a bunch of options. And so you can see that uh, I want to get facts. All this stuff in green is the facts that I've been get as I run the playbook. And I stored these in a the file, so these are yellow in color. That means all four files for each of the four hosts have data in it. And so we were talking about the Jinja template and how it could use to convert a data structure into a file. Let's look at how the JSON output can be captured in a file. So this is the output uh, of uh, running the YAML playbook. And you can see that how it captures the entire um, features of all the files of all the switches on the host. So we looked at how we could enable features. We looked at data collection. And now let's look at VLAN management, right? So say I want to check if VLAN 50 exists. I want to check if VLAN 70 doesn't exist. I want to ensure that a range of VLANs are present. Or I want to ensure that a group of VLANs are present with given names. And so let's see how you can do this very simply with another such playbook that we've written. So this is a sample playbook for doing the VLAN checks that we just talked about. Um, you can see that the host here is mentioned as leaf. So all the hosts that are part of the leaf will be listed here. And it will run the scripts against each particular leaf, right? So NXOS VLAN is the module that you can use to do these VLAN checks across various hosts. So you can see the first task we're doing is we're checking if VLAN ID equal to 50 is present. And we're checking also that if 70 is not on the device. right? So you can see this is like as good as human readable format. You're saying ensure VLAN 70 is not on the device. Very intuitive, very powerful, no knowledge of programming, no scripting. You can just simply uh, list statements here. right? And the third task is you're ensuring that a range of VLANs is present. So you're checking if 2 to 10, 20 to 50, and 50 to 55 to 60 are present. And finally, you're checking if you're a group of VLANs is present with the given names. So in this particular script, uh, we've put a variable, the item.vlan ID. And this is basically your iterating with this particular VLAN IDs, and you're assigning names against those VLAN IDs. So here you can see. VLAN ID 10 is getting name web, 20 is getting app, and so on and so forth. And this is happening across all the hosts that we mentioned in the host file for all the leaves. So if you have, say, 10 leaves, you can do this across all your leaves. So you can see just by like four or five human readable uh, programming, uh, programming constructs, you can really check for VLAN consistency on your switch. So let's uh, see, execute the script and see how this works. OK, so we've run the script and against the host with the deploy vlan.yml file, right? The first task that it runs is to ensure that vlan50 exists with name web, right? And it's in shutdown state. So here we see that the state of this is, is yellow. That means 
these three tasks have occurred, and the VLAN 50 has, is now present on these switches. The second task is to check if VLAN 70 is not on the device. So like we can see on the left, the VLAN 70 is not present, so there was no change to this particular device. The third one was to ensure that the range of VLANs is present on the switches. So once again, for all the leaves, 6K, 2 6Ks and 1 5K, the script was run and the particular uh, VLANs were ensured that the range is present. And finally, a group of VLANs with their names on all. So it iterated through all the three switches and it checked for VLAN IDs with the corresponding names. So you can see that each task was run about four times and there were all these changes. And so now if you go back to the switch and check, so you're doing a show VLAN, you can see that whatever we configured by the script is now part of the switch. Right, so we looked at how we can check for VLAN consistency across. And then finally, if you want to retrieve neighbor information or CDP information and similarly store it in a file. So let's look at this demo and how we can do this. Okay, so once again, we're running against the same host. So this is the sample playbook that we can use for this particular task. Um, we're just using the nxos underscore get underscore neighbors module. And with this module, you can check if uh, you can get CDP information and actually store it in a file and then compare it with uh, your CDP command. So source equal to data.j2 is where you're storing this. We talked about the Jinja2 templates, how we can use that to convert the data structure into a file. Yeah, question. Yeah, we could do LLDB neighbors as well. So here you can see we've run the script. You can get neighbors. You have three of them, uh, four tasks that ran properly, and it changed and it stored these uh, data in the files, right? So three of, so because the first task was just getting information, there was no change to green color. When the change occurred, they changed to yellow. So you can see that how with like just probably four to five human readable lines, you can really program your Nexus switches across your data centers, right? Really powerful capability, really powerful configuration management tools for the Nexus portfolio. And so if you want to really get started with NX API and Ansible today, you can either get a Docker image, or you can go to GitHub, and Jason Edelman has done some really great stuff with these NX API modules and libraries that you can download, leverage, and begin executing your scripts today. Right? Um, not only that, if you don't have a switch today and you wish to try it out, guess what? We have an NXOS virtual uh, machine as well that you can today download and try out all these scripts there as well via the viral. So if you want, you can take down this information. It's really helpful. And finally, let's get to the key takeaways of the programmability session, right? So like we said, investment protection, powerful programmability, move towards SDN, shift towards open APIs, as well as a push to manage the switch as a server today, right? So um, some best practices and tools that you can use for network administration, and really use these open APIs to program your switches and get desirable outputs. And finally, uh, NX API is there on DevNet today. We have our developer.cisco.com website, uh, forward slash site, forward slash NX API, where you can go and check out all these scripts. There's the Ansible um, website where you can go, as well as the GitHub where we'll be contributing to scripts similar to some demos that we spoke about today, and really use this to program your data center 
as well as automate uh, some of the stuff that we spoke about today. And with that, thank you for joining today. If you have any questions, you can stick back. Thank you.